This sculpture was created by Verrocchio for the exterior of Orsan Michele in Florence, and it perfectly captures the doubt and the wonder of St. Thomas in his first encounter with Jesus after Christ's resurrection. Christ solemnly pulls aside his robes as Thomas tentatively reaches towards him. Their faces are calm, but this is a far from tranquil moment as Verrocchio indicates rather marvellously in the agitated, twisted robes of St Thomas, which are, you'll notice, rendered differently from the graceful, heavier folds of Christ's drapery. This is a hugely innovative work. Look at the way St Thomas stands on the ledge, effectively in front of the niche, his foot projecting out into our space. Not only did this resolve a practical issue for Verrocchio, that of the niche having been created to house just a single figure, but it also enabled the artist to place Christ on a higher level than St Thomas without forfeiting the naturalism of the scene. And it introduces a dynamism and an immediacy that hadn't been seen in sculpture since classical antiquity. The diagonal that starts at St Thomas's foot leads the eye to his knee and then elbow and finally to his hesitant but determined right hand to find its resolution in Christ's wound, which is both central to the composition and, of course, to the narrative. The line created by Christ's left arm provides another natural guide to this focal point, as does the sweep of his graceful right arm. Christ's right hand, positioned above St Thomas's head, is interesting. It is not at all unusual for narratives of this kind to depict Christ blessing Thomas, but here the hand is turned out to face the viewer. Now, it could be that Verrocchio wants us to witness the wounds on the hand as well as on Christ's side, but I think that in this instance the gesture is rooted in a practicality. To make them lighter and less expensive, the sculptures were backless and therefore to mask the fact that Christ's right arm is open to the wrist, Verrocchio has cleverly tilted the hand. The sculpture was commissioned for Orsan Michele by the Tribunale de Mercatanzia, a guild that acted as a judicial body in Florence. The underlying symbolism of their choice of subject was therefore the search for truth, but also the capacity for mercy. And I think these two qualities are brilliantly embodied in the interaction between Christ and St Thomas. For my money, however, much of the power of this sculpture lies in the fact that these two men are in such close proximity, away from the rest of the world, partially enveloped in this niche together. And it is this, I think, that really enhances their emotional and their spiritual connection. So this is a sculpture that is displayed to the world. The original is now in a museum. This is a, a copy on the outside of Orsan Michele. But the sculpture depicts an intensely intimate moment between these two men. A painting tends to give us a context, a setting, or even a backdrop a situation that allows us to focus on the narrative that is being unfolded in brushstroke and upon canvas. But it's not so evident, is it? When we look at this sculpture, we're relying upon those two characters to tell us the tale. But here is Thomas and here is the risen Christ. Thomas is extending his reach, his finger, towards the wounded side of Christ. And Christ is extending his hand in that gesture of blessing over Thomas. Thomas can see for himself, touch for himself, all that others have been talking about. 
Thomas wants to see the wounds, touch the wounds, for these are the identifying marks. This is the evidence that this is Jesus. He doesn't want to rely on what others have to say. He wants to see. These are the wounds of love. These are the marks of Jesus' passion. This is the cost of a love which gives its all for the sake of others. You know, the cross and the passion and the death of Jesus, they're not problems that God has to solve in the resurrection. There's no airbrushing, there's no photoshopping that needs to be done. These wounds are who Jesus is, for by his wounds we are healed. And as much as Thomas reaches out towards the wounded side of Jesus, notice that it is Jesus who asks for Thomas' hand. The Lord always reaches out towards us in our uncertainty or in our fears or in our doubting or in our moments of darkness. There is always a gentle reassurance going on. And Jesus wants Thomas to come to that depth of love and faith, but only when and as he is ready. Touch me and see. Thomas is almost iconic of all those who don't have that tangible experience with the risen Lord. Those who have to believe without seeing. Notice the hand of blessing. This is where we know the Lord's presence. This is where we know his nearness. When we believe without seeing. But this narrative, and I think these two sculpted figures, well, they remind us of this, that love wounds and love scars, especially when love gives of itself so freely. We've probably all experienced a certain woundedness because we have loved someone else. Love comes at a cost. But maybe, just maybe, this is a reminder that we encounter the risen Christ, that we touch the risen Christ in the woundedness of others, whether that's physically, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually wounded. These are the casualties of love all around us. And when we reach out to Christ, not in doubt or in fear, but in love, ironically, we are at his service and care and compassion. All this woundedness is caught up in the redeeming, healing wounds of the Lord, which he freely reveals to us. We can find shelter in his wounds hide in his wounds. By his wounds you have been healed, and from these wounds, from this wounded side that Jesus reveals to Thomas, flows love and mercy. It's Jesus who breathes peace upon the disciples in the upper room. Peace is his greeting. Peace is his gift. And maybe that's how we continue both the ministry and the mission of Christ. The love and mercy flowing from his wounded side is a love and mercy we are to show to others. Into the woundedness of those around us, there is a balm that we can bring. It is the presence of the risen Christ, the light of the risen Christ, the hope of the risen Christ that comes through the wholeness and the peace that only he can bring. As Thomas reaches out to touch Christ's wounds, he receives Christ's blessing. That blessing can touch the lives of love's wounded through us who have eyes to see Christ among us in them. You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe.